We've talked a lot about urban trees this year on Oklahoma Gardening, but did you realize that you can really come up with the value of a tree just like the one that we have here? And joining us today is Mr. Bob Burchell of Oklahoma City, who is an urban forestry consultant. And Bob, welcome to Oklahoma Gardening. Thank you. Now, Bob, you're going to tell us about how we can come up with the value of a tree and tell us a little bit about why people maybe need such numbers. To begin with, what are some examples in your experience why people would need the value of a tree? You know, I understand in visiting with you there's several different reasons, maybe from accident, fire. Why don't you elaborate on that for us? Well, trees can be damaged uh, in many different ways. Naturally, trees can be damaged in storms, tornadoes, ice storms. Uh, and there may be a need to value the tree for insurance or uh, casualty, casualty loss reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, trees can be damaged, in, particularly in urban areas, by vandalism or uh, accidents. Uh, for example, uh, automobile uh, losing control and leaving the road and running into a tree, uh, damaging the tree. Sometimes trees are damaged as a result of negligence on the part of others, uh, starting a fire, for example, and having it spread off of their property onto somebody else's property and burning trees. Um, uh, leaks in pipelines, for example, can cause damages to trees, or the cleaning up of those uh, contaminations can lead to the, to the damage of trees. So there are really lots of different mm -hmm. ways in which trees might be damaged, and in order for the uh, person who owns the tree to be compensated for that loss, then we need to determine what the value of the tree is to come up with a fair settlement. Okay. Now there's also many ways to determine that value too, uh, several methods. Why don't you tell us about some of the methods and then we might go into some details. Then. Okay. The, the first thing that I look at when de trying to determine the value of the tree is what was the use of the tree. Uh, as you probably are aware, here in Oklahoma, in the eastern part of the state, we have a lot of commercial timberland. If the trees that were damaged were being grown for the intent of making uh, paper or, or timber products, then we would use whatever the market value is for that type of uh, commodity to determine the value of the trees. Some people cut uh, trees down for firewood production. And if, there were, if those trees were damaged or lost, then we could determine the volume of firewood that would be available from those trees and figure out a value in, in that respect. Um, in many cases, most trees don't have a particular commercial value, and therefore we have to come up with a different method to determine the value of the tree. And there are some formulas that have been utilized uh, for a number of years to help determine the value of non-commercial trees. Okay, and that's probably what we would use more in a home type situation in right. many cases. Right. Now if it's a smaller tree, say one we've just purchased and the caliper is, is pretty small, there's a different method for that compared to a large shade tree. Is that yes. true? Yes. What If the tree is available in a nursery, um, and when I say if it's available, a tree of the same type and the same size, then the loss would be what it would cost you to go and purchase that tree, generally retail price, plus the cost of having somebody plant the tree for you and maintain that tree, normally for a year, sometimes even two years, and also the cost of cleaning up the debris that would, have, would be left behind when the, tree is, when the original tree has been damaged. So all of those costs combined would be the loss to the property owner if a smaller tree is damaged or destroyed. Okay, good. Now, in a case like this with a large tree, we're looking at a little bit different situation. I understand, Bob, that the formula has just recently changed, what, this year, as a matter of fact. Right. Um, first of all, who comes up with these formulas for appraisals? Tell us a little bit about that group. Well, there's an organization called the Council of uh, Landscape Plant Appraisers and it is an umbrella organization of several different uh, professional trade associations. The one that I'm most familiar with and that I am a member of is the International Society of Arboriculture. And, and that organization, in fact, prints and publishes a guidebook which can be used by professional plant appraisers to help them through the process okay. of the formula and understanding what it's about and how to determine a fair value of a, of a tree. Okay. Tell us the new formula. I guess, what did you say, that this came out in August it of was, this year? Yeah, they've been working on this for several years and it was just recently published in August. Okay. What is the new formula then? Well, 
it's, it's called a trunk formula method form, and it takes into consideration several factors, including the size of the tree, the type of tree, uh, its condition, and where it's located in the landscape. Okay. So the basic formula then, as I understand, to get the appraised value is the basic value times the condition times the location. Now, that's a little bit different from what we've been used to. Briefly tell us what things go into determine the basic value then. Well, the basic value takes into comparison the area of the trunk of the casualty tree. This particular tree is, uh, that's a 19 inch diameter tree. Okay, and where do you, do you always have a standard location where you measure that too? Normally we measure four and a half feet above the ground, which is a, which is a standard look measuring point. On this particular tree, at four and a half feet, there's an old branch here, and this, this trunk is actually swollen so we would get a false reading, okay. so I measure just slightly okay. below that um, uh, point so that I would have a, a, a fair uh, estimate of the, of the diameter of this tree. We assume that the trunk diameter is circular, and we convert the diameter to square inches, and that's a straight mathematical uh, conversion. And then what this new formula does is it compares the area of inches on this tree with the area of the largest commercially available comparable tree that we could purchase at a nursery. And okay. then there's a difference in that size and there's a series of uh, mathematical formulas that you would apply and, and steps to cr come up with a number that would um, give us a basic value for this particular tree. And that number that we used in these steps that we came up with was $9,923.68. Now that is multiplied by the condition. What are you looking at on the condition? There are lots of things that I look for when I'm looking at condition and trying to rate the condition of a tree. First of all, I look at the trunk of the tree. Is it sound? Um, it, does, it, does there appear to be any decay or old trunk wounds? I also look up into the tree and look at the branching structure. Is there dead wood up in there, or is there a lot of dead wood, or are, are most of the major branches in good shape? Mm -hmm. There don't appear to be any hazards as far as snags or any other mm -hmm. type of uh, cracks or old storm damage or right. improper pruning practices in the past. Now, based on that point system that you give to, we came up with a 80 percent, right. or a .80. And then that number plus the other, or multiplied by the other one, is now multiplied by a number for the location. Right. And you gave it a .75. Now location in a park setting like we're at here in Stillwater, wh what are you looking at for location? Well, the location, they, they, they look at three factors in location. One is the site, which refers to the, the general site of the tree, whether it be not so much specifically in the yard or in the park, but the, uh, a, a, perhaps a broader look at the site of, of where the tree is located. Also, the contribution that the tree plays to that particular landscape, mm -hmm. and then the placement of that tree within that particular site. Okay, and that number again was .75, so all of those numbers multiplied out, we came up with a appraised value of this tree of $5,954.21, and uh, in the directions I said to round it off, so we estimated about $6,000. That's right. Now that's a little bit high in it compared to, say, like the old formula. Why do you think that would be? Well, the old formula used a straight dollar value, and that was adjusted periodically as inflation rates uh, changed and the, and the cost of trees, purchasing trees, increased. My, um, as I understand it, the, the reason that there's a difference in value is that with the new formula that's been changed, or been uh, modified, they have increased that basic dollar value up from okay. the old value of $27. So there's probably a higher value built into that formula somewhere, which gives us, um, which is the reason for the, the, the higher value, the, okay. the appraisal value. Right, now Bob, of course you're familiar that we have a fact sheet number 6416 that has the old formula in it and that's still going to be available until we can get it amended for the new changes. So a homeowner could go out and, and get this information from their extension office. But I think what you're showing is that sometimes it is a little more complicated. How would an individual find an appraiser? What, what is the best way to go to find that information? Well. I would suggest that they can contact the State Forestry Office in Oklahoma City. They have a list of uh, consultants in the state that they, can, okay. that they can mail out to homeowners. 
um, the county extension offices would probably okay. have a list, perhaps the same list that the state mm -hmm. has, but maybe even have a list that uh, has local uh, professionals that could perhaps do some kind of appraisal work. Well, Bob, the bottom line is trees are a lot more valuable than we think they are. Would you like to comment on that well, in many cases? Yeah, I think so. Um, and many times when I have done appraisals and, and I give a number, um, people, you know, they're taken aback at it. I think part of the reason is, is, that, is that we normally don't go out and buy big trees like this. It's not part of our normal um, um, daily process like we would go and, and purchase a new car for example we know that we would expect to pay ten or fifteen or twenty thousand dollars for a new car um, we don't normally go out and pay six or seven thousand dollars to plant a tree we're used to going out and buying right. a tree Smaller. for maybe a hundred dollars or so right. but then we're taking in all the other benefits of the tree as right. well. By the, so. as the tree grows it certainly right. increases in value uh, there have been studies that have shown that trees in urban areas can add as much as 20 percent to the value of, sure. of residential properties so um, the trees certainly do have a, a, right. a, a, a value. Well, I want to thank you for stopping by and giving us information on this, and I think it's, it's very timely, too, that uh, people need to be aware of the opportunities out there as far as coming up with these kind of figures because they may apply to any specific needs. So sure. thanks again, Bob. You bet. Appreciate, Appreciate it. Bye-bye.